going to talk about medication related errors. There are three most common types of errors compromising patient safety. These include surgical procedures, medication errors and health care associated infections. In this video, we will describe errors, reactions or events related to medication use. There are different kinds of medication related errors which include adverse drug events which means an injury related to drug use. For example, some drugs used for migraine may have unwanted cardiac arrhythmia effects. If this is an unusual finding and there is no other reason for the event should be reported in the literature. Other kinds of errors include medication error which is either prescribing, dispensing or administering a wrong drug. Drug administration error is where the prescription is correct but the pharmacist issuing the drug has mistakenly given another drug. For example, a medical store pharmacist has dispensed Panadol for three months instead of Danazol. Overdose of Panadol can cause liver damage. Other kinds of medication related errors will include dosage errors. So the patient receives a wrong dose of the medication. In this video, we will describe different scenarios of medication and related errors. The video will detail how every person working in a hospital or a clinic in the business of dispensing or ordering medications should try to raise patient safety to the top of the agenda with the hope of ultimately increasing the quality of care delivered to patients and improve their outcomes. We will go through some scenarios with the risk of medication related errors. We will also detail why these occur and possible ways to avoid or prevent them. In the intensive care units and special care units, there is a higher likelihood of many kinds of drug related errors. There are many reasons for such errors. Patients are usually very sick and are on multiple drugs at high dosages and medications. As the patient responses change, the drugs and the dosages will also change. Often the patients and their relatives will not be able to corroborate or contribute important information. There are different levels of healthcare providers at the patient's bedside. Some of these may be at a very junior level and some at a very senior level. Sometimes doctors may not communicate with other staff accurately. In the intensive care unit or safety care units, the safety principles are applicable in two separate areas. One is the individual level where the provider needs proper training and certification for carrying out procedures, protocols and communication. The other area is the collective group which generates the protocols and ensures quality care. The collective group is also responsible for incident reporting process to identify areas for improvement. The number of medication errors for inpatients in general wards may be much higher as there are a larger number of patients here in comparison to special care areas. The other area where errors can happen is when drugs are given in solutions intravenously. Administering the wrong volume of a drug or the wrong percentage of drug in the solution may have severe consequences for patient safety. 
Sintocinon is frequently used in the labor room and the strength of the solution will change according to the patient's situation. Providers responsible for administering drugs in solution need the training to understand the concentration expressed on the drug vial and the method for calculating the drug concentration. A typical example of this is when we use pain relieving drugs after surgery. Self medication is another aspect of medication related errors. There is a chance that the drug acquired may be inappropriate and the intended duration of the drug may be wrong. An example is the abuse of painkiller drugs which may eventually lead to liver failure or kidney failure. Lay persons may not know the proper time and way to use the drugs or they may be using the wrong dose. Look alike drugs are another area for concern regarding patient safety. For example, the size of the vial or the color of the label and or the name of the drug may be similar. A severe error will lead to high morbidity or even mortality. It is the responsibility of medical care center staff to ensure that in high risk areas due precautions are taken. Labeling should be clear and color coding can mark drugs that should be used cautiously. Now we move on to the second part of the video where we'll, we will talk about specific strategies to reduce medication errors. Let's talk about reducing complexity. Researchers have developed an operational definition of complexity in patient care. We can assess complexity by measuring the number of steps in the task, the number of choices, execution duration, the amount of information that is contained for doing the task, patterns of intervening and distracting tasks. Simplification of the task will lead to fewer errors in the task. Another issue is to optimize the information processing. Healthcare providers are at the center of all patient interactions for decision making, information gathering and interventions. If the healthcare provider performs below standard, it can jeopardize patient safety. Checklists, protocols and guidelines help to standardize the task carried out by the healthcare provider and to optimize the processing of information. A typical example is a standardized clinical history taking format. Another strategy used for reducing errors is automation. How can we automate wisely? In the healthcare setting, automation means using computers or handheld devices for recording, ordering and verifying. Computerized Physician Order Entry or CPOE is an example of using computer programs to decrease the chances of medication error. The software may have the capability to cross-reference the medication with the patient condition, example, allergic reaction, etc. It also means using software to ensure instructions are followed promptly and accurately. Introducing automation in tasks can standardize the task. However, no matter how advanced the automation, human error can still happen. So the human element remains central to ensuring smooth progress. Another strategy to prevent errors is to use 
either a physical constraint or a procedural constraint or a cultural constraint. By physical constraint, we mean to remove any object which can cause harm to the patient. For example, remove all drugs stored in the special care unit that have potential for serious harm. Therefore, if the drug is required, it has to be ordered specifically from the pharmacy and used cautiously. Procedural constraint means that protocols must be followed and checklists must be ticked off. For example, before starting an operation, you have a time out when the surgeon calls out to the entire team the patient's name and identification number, the procedure's name and if a specific site right or left has to be operated to mention that as well. This ensures that the right procedure is being doing for the right patient. Cultural constraint means creating a culture of practice in an institution. For example, to stop using any abbreviations except those that are allowed. Another strategy for reducing errors is whenever a new intervention is introduced in the clinical setting to make sure that it is piloted before the actual intervention takes place and to make sure that if any errors or any problems occur that they are discussed to identify how to make the process safer. An example of this is a new intervention in the form of antibiotic for surgical prophylaxis or a new procedure such as a laparoscopic procedure. Very common reasons leading to medication error are poor handwriting on the prescription pad, error in writing the spelling of the medication or the dose and the route of administration. In addition, error will also happen if the prescriber does not check for allergic reaction. Also check to see if there are any contraindications for prescribing the medication. For example, creatinine levels have to be normal. With this, we come to the end of our video. There is a list of references in the description box. FCPS candidates may find medication errors, an exciting topic for research to fulfill the requirements for part 2 examination. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, share and press the bell icon for notification of further videos. Thank you and Khuda Hafiz.